Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the iFun Mini Giant. A strange name for the size of machine that it is, but before we get started, roll those credits. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare have thousands of courses on hundreds of different topics, boosting your creativity and learning at your own pace. Take a look at the link in the video description. The first thousand people that sign up will get one month's free trial and stick around for the end of this video for some more information about our sponsor. Right, let's dive straight in. So normally we would bring something like this to you on a live stream, but our StreamYard account is acting up at the moment and isn't playing ball. So offline it is. This is a resin printer from iFun. So it's an entry level dentistry machine. Now, what that means is that they're going for uniformity and certain key features that other machines don't always try to provide you. So first and foremost, this is a 4K six inch monochrome LCD. It has a XY accuracy of 35 humes. There we go, right down the middle there. And this has a heated vat, which is different. So, I expect that, I, well I say I expect that, it's not something that we've really seen on a, lot of, um, on a lot of machines. In fact, I can't think of many that actually have a heated vat in them. So for those who aren't aware, when you are resin printing, um, you want your resin to be at a consistent temperature. Changes in temperature in resin change the viscosity of the resin. So it's why if you put your 3D printers in a uninsulated shed or in a garage or something like that, they will perform and the print settings will need to be different than if you had them in your home or in a greenhouse or whatever. Consistent temperatures help achieve consistent prints. So full disclosure, iFun did, oh geez, iFun did send us this machine. We are not being paid for this video. Um, we are not paid for any of our reviews. We are sent machines, and then we try and give you the most unbiased opinion that we possibly can. This being a six inch machine means that it has a build volume of 143 by 89 by 150. And let's get it out of the box. It's heavy. <laughs> uh, okay. Just trying to get the packing out of the way first. I think we're just gonna have to slice down the box. His fingers crossed this doesn't need to go back. So the machine has only just released and as a result of which doesn't currently have a price on their website. You can go on and get a quote but for often pay attention to the position of the FET film to a join missing. After writing the package film with all accessories inside, I need to check several main parts. Frequently asked questions. Notes for use. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's just a blurb sheet about how you resin print. So what this boasts about on the website, if I pull it up, is uniform production a weight deviation of less than 2%. So if you're thinking about dental molds, right? And when you're trying to print for dentistry, the absolute key is accuracy and consistency. So any deviation in the warping or moving of parts is a huge problem. So a uniform deviation of less than 2% is actually pretty good. Um, the, con the constant temperature that it creates by warming the vat is between 25 and 30 degrees, which is perfect for resin temperatures. Uh, claims, all oh right, a 35 hume accuracy. That's 
fairly standard for a 4K machine. Um, especially on a 4K machine of this size. I think I'm just going to pull this out in the packaging. Hold on. And away goes the packet. We've got a little pack of accessories there. And then we wiggle this out. Pop that on the side. Right. That was a pain. Right. So, let's take a look at this. So this is the little accessory box. So just so you can see, this is what the printer looks like. It all comes wrapped up in cling film, which we will pull off. So six inches is not giant, but again, remember, tall for a job. There's not very many people who are ever, as dentists, who are ever going to require to print larger than you would need to on a, on a six inch machine. The only thing that extra size would give a dentist would be the production size. So you would be able to print multiple dentures all at once. Come on. Oh, it's well, it's well wrapped. There is a FEP film on the back. I don't know if that means the FEP isn't pre-installed, but there's literally a FEP film that is taped to the back of the machine. As you can see, because it's labelled, FEP film. <laughs> Seems a little strange, but fine. So, we now undo these bits, which are double taped, obviously. So we liked a lot of things about this. Obviously the fact that it has a heated build chamber, brilliant. Um, it also has a really compact footprint. So bearing in mind the size of the machine, and this machine isn't particularly small, um, it's actually just the vat and then this. And I really liked the way the door works. The door is set up so that you can use this in a in an office space, unsurprisingly. It's really set up so that you can use this as a dentist because one of its little party tricks is that the door moves round. And then you open the door for full access to the interior of the machine. Close the door. No open doors that have to take up extra space, no hoods, no hoods you have to take off and put somewhere whilst you're trying to get to your resin. So I really like that. I think that's really good. There we go. So let's say 35 Yum, and then let's have a look what else have we got here. Yeah, uses Chi2 box. Standard applications are jewelry, dental casting, hearing aids, orthodontic treatments, all of that good stuff. Let's take a look in the mystery box. So, in the mystery box we have the obligatory power brick at this point. The kettle cords, rest of that box is empty. And then in here we have a relatively standard garb. So we have a quite a thick scraper. We have some little cleaning cloths, a USB stick. Hmm, quite a nice little USB stick actually. We have some gloves that won't fit any regular size human being, more cleaning cloths, some extra screws, right? Some Allen keys for those screws. A pair of tweezers. Yeah, quite a nice little pair of tweezers. Completely impossible to get into, but theoretically nice. There we go, nice little pair of tweezers for you. The plastic scraper. And 
the obligatory pair of blue handled clippers. You also get some filters to put your resin and the genie back in the bottle. Let's carry on unpacking this. So, it's a really thick tape on here, like unnecessary. handles okay so one would assume that we undo the little knob and the build plate slides out I thought that was a textured build plate then but it isn't it's just sort of laser etched with a checkerboard on it it's an interesting choice let's get this out of the way oh, that's in there isn't it go pull out these so we undo the vat screws cool. oh there we go Jesus That screws come out. And then you have some nice little handles. So the VAT does come with a FEP pre-installed and pre-tensioned. And then you have these handles on the side which you can hold up the machine with and then move them out of the way. So reinstall that. Reinstall these. There is a max fill line and everything on here. I said I, this is a heavy machine. So the machine itself weighs 17 kilos, which is quite a lot, bearing in mind it's not the biggest. So you do obviously get a spare FEP, which comes with some tape pre installed, which is great. So you do get a spare FEP. FEPs are a disposable part, they are wearable, so you will eventually need to change them. And then we will just need to grab up one of our many power cords. Let's do this one. Yep. Plug this in. Plug this in at the back. So interestingly, there's two power buttons around the back. So if I pull this out. So you can see here, there's a power button here that cuts the power to the machine. And then there's another power button to boot the machine. Strange, but fine. We obviously have the obligatory, quite a satisfactory peel, so that's very nice. All right, let's plug this back in. Turn that on to begin with. The second button is for the heater. That makes sense. So, as you can see from this, we are looking at a Chi2 box mainboard in this um, because it is the standard Chi2 box uh, display. I will have to just plug in the USB stick so we can see what we are working with. Right, so 
Quick Brink Guide, Instructions for Use, Slicing Software, Maintenance Video, Dual Casting Test, Orthodontic Mould Test, FAQ, and After Sale Contact Support. Slicing Software is, so they've got Chi2 Box 1.9 on here, which is interesting. Let's take a look at the settings. Right, so default setup, change the name to Mini Giant and import the parameters. Okay, we've set all the parameters, just slice directly. Okay, well, we run Cheetah Box here. So we will use the free version for the moment. Take a look and see what version this is that we've got. I can't remember. 1.92, so it's the same one that they're using. So let's start with adding a new printer. Add new profile, edit profile name to Mini Giant, import the profile, go to the USB. Right. That is us all set up. Nice and easy, can't complain about that. Super, super simple setup. Let's give a go at installing the build plate. So there is quite a nice chunky handle on this. It looks to me like this is leveled from the factory, but we'll take a look at the quick start guide and make sure that that's the case. And we will see what we need to do. Okay, so it comes leveled from the factory. So I am going to throw some resin in this and see what it does. I've got some Nova 3D resin that I had laying about. So I'm going to fill it with a bit of that. So let's pour that in. Don't need to fill it all the way because I'll just be doing the standard frozen test. So we can as well turn on the second switch at the back. Turning on the second switch is what turns on the heated vat. So that'll give us that. Model wise, I am going to go for the frozen print test. Right then, I have the Frozen XP Finder, which is the exposure finder that's on the Frozen website. It's a super, super quick model to print, and we find it's a really good help for figuring out how this whole thing is supposed to go. Really nice, big touch screen on this. Super, super easy to use. On there, press play, and then down we go. We can shut this door. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, and just through that, through the magic of cinema, we now have our completed exposure test. Now this was done with the Nova 3D resin and it was done at the stock settings that this machine comes with. The stock settings for this in Chi2 box are 3.5 seconds a layer, eight burning layers and a burning layer time of 20 seconds. Some of those numbers feel a little bit high. The exposure test does sort of hint to that as well. Although to be fair, this is pretty clear. It's a little, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's perhaps not as pronounced as I was expect it to be, but let's do a close up and have a little look. So this is the close up of the finished model. As you can see, all of the holes are visible 
and all of the etching is on the corners. You can see the Frozen logo in the middle there and everything is separate and looking pretty good. So this is the version 2 of the test. The, uh, I don't know if you can see there, but the text even came out. So I am about ready to try some other models. So first question is, does it work? Yes, it does. Works out of the box. No leveling required. It did it. It was all set up. I didn't even set the Z offset. Bang. Printed straight away. Printed the first test that I put on there. I can tell you that I ran the heater for a little while and it is toasty in there. It's about 25, it is about 20 degrees in the chamber. Obviously it's actually heating the uh, the vat, not the chamber, but you know, physics. So, um, so yeah, the only criticism, if indeed I have one, is that the USB port is on the side. Now, bearing in mind, they've gone through quite a lot of efforts to mean that you can access everything from the front without having to move things to the side or have hoods go over or have doors that open either side. This on the side of the machine does feel like an odd addition. Feels like what they should have done is put it so that the USB key went in the front here next to the screen. Moving on to the screen, the screen is large. The touch screen on this is almost as big as the screen you're using to print with. So that's a bit of a strange choice, but it is super easy to use, nice and easy to navigate. I can't really fault anything on the machine. It does everything it says on the tin. It prints really nicely. We will have a full review that comes out of this as, as well. This is just the first look. Obviously, this is just the test model. This is just the unboxing. So we'll play about with this for the next week or so, and then we'll do another follow-up video for you so you can see some of the models that this prints and how this does long-term. Overall, I'm really impressed with how it goes. Stick around. Don't forget to check out the video at the end of this video that uh, shows you our sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, iFun, for sending us this machine. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of courses on hundreds of different topics. Everything from animation through to After Effects, Adobe Premiere, there's things on gardening, bakery, there's even some great courses on 3D printing. We've recently been using it on the channel and we've started to try and develop our skills in Adobe Premiere so we can edit and grade these, uh, these videos much better than we do. So for example, we've recently done a course on color grading with Fred Treveno and we've also done a piece on how to organize your B-roll with Sean Morton. And it really helped us to change the way we approach our videos. Everything we've been doing up until now has, has really been fairly basic. And this is helping us to level up and get to that next level. So there's actually a link in the video description. The first thousand people to join are going to get a month's free trial. And during that time, you'll be able to access all of the content, all of the courses that are on there. And you'll really be able to learn at your own pace. There's so many different videos out there on, on how to sort of learn new skills. It can be really difficult sometimes to find professionally curated and produced content that enables you to learn at the level that you want to and allows you to dip in and out as and when you want. So don't forget to take a look at the link in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. Stay safe.